everybody welcome to my first video okay no for real though welcome to my first video i would say if you're a returning subscriber thank you but let's be real i have like 50 subscribers and most of them are just on my page by default because they saw some makeup tip or video i had from tiktok and anyways nonetheless um i basically wanted to start a youtube channel because i just did a 10-year prison sentence in florida's most high level security maximum only prison for females in florida that houses death row inmates has the gun tower um eileen warnos like every big prolific you know high profile case that you have seen on tv if it's a woman in florida this is where she is i did my entire 10-year prison sentence at that prison and while i knew i was in prison and i knew that there was very bad people there um i like really didn't know what these women did some of them like you know susie over there said she killed her um her husband because he was beating her and he abused her children and da da da, da. and you know i'm feeling like oh man susie doesn't even deserve to be here like they need to let her go but I get home and I see Susie on Snapped. And Susie did not kill her. Like, whoa. You know, it's other stuff going on. So once I started seeing these stories on like Dateline, 48 Hours, Snapped, Killer Women, um, Killer Couples, I was like, dang, I like slept next to these women literally every single day. Not only that, I worked with them day in and day out. They were some of the most trusted like role model inmates in the prison. And it's mind blowing. So then I was like, look at Susie with those crocodile tears in court. But yeah, she's in prison doing bum, bum, bum. You know what I mean? So anyways, I decided because every time I would tell the story to one of my friends or somebody that was around me, if, you know, something came up, I would be like, no, you know, Susie's not like that. Don't let her fool you. She's really like this. Or no, Susie really didn't do it the way that they're saying she did it because da, 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 da. Every time I would tell a story, everyone was like captivated. So I'm really hoping that you guys will like my stories, will find interest in them, will like my personality, will vibe with me. And, you know, I can go somewhere from here. I was actually, um, I was pregnant when I got arrested. Long story short, because I'm not going to give you guys the whole BS role here unless y'all want to hear it one day. But I was in a relationship that led to a lot of theft um, situations. I didn't ask enough questions. Apparently it was a Russian guy and he had like a whole bunch of sketchy stuff going on. I was very young. Um, but I didn't ask enough questions. I got in trouble for these things that were stolen being in this house. And, um, basically like whenever it came time to face the music, he fled the country and I got pinned with a whole lot of things that I probably would not have otherwise got pinned with if he didn't flee the country. So anyways, um, I was pregnant with my first child at this point, you know, this court, these court proceedings had gone on for years, right? So I was already dating somebody else. I was pregnant with my first and only child had never been in trouble. And I had my son while I was incarcerated looking at a 10 year sentence. So at that point, his father, thank God was a great guy, never been in trouble. Good family. I had a good family too, and a good upbringing. Like this was not, I wasn't like a career criminal. Um, and not, I'm not trying to like, you know, make make myself like a saint or clear what I did like I was not a saint okay but I have grown a lot of time has passed and I've done a lot of good things with my life I am not ideally where I would like to be at 39 years old because I lost a decade of my life with my son and with my you know being able to move forward and achieve things and milestones but nonetheless I'm very happy now my son's father lives on the next street over we have condos in the same neighborhood he brought my son to see me every weekend in prison so he fostered a very good relationship between us which I'm very very thankful for um, and life is is on the up and up I have a job, but I basically thought, you know what, if I can come on here, like, I would never ask strangers for money or a social media for money, but if I can use this platform and have Google pay me to throw some ads in between my stories for five seconds and you guys watch them in the midst of my stories, like, why not? You know what I mean? Like, why not? Why not? You know, but technology has changed a lot in the decade that I was gone, and a lot of things are different, like all these, you know, um, filters and um face twitter uh face snaps and like all this stuff <laughs> whatever the hell it is y'all know what i'm talking about when i went to prison my space was going out 
Facebook was coming in, like all these things that are going on, Alexa who, like, I'm like, why is this thing talking to me when I got home? You know, things like that, like things have changed. So if you guys like me and you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe, that'd be awesome. But also what I really would love is if you could go in the comments below and let me know what I'm doing wrong, what you didn't like, what didn't vibe or resonate with you and help me like figure out and tweak this channel so I can get to the thousand subscribers because that is how that is where I have to get to get monetized and be able to put these commercials in the video, right? So, okay. Anywho, I got out in February uh, 14th of 2020, so I've been out a little shy of two years, and I feel good about life, like I've accomplished a lot of things, and my son and I are happy and healthy, and I love him, and he's freaking awesome, but, um, you know, I still don't have it all quite where I would like to have it. So, I am going to start by telling you guys, just like any other true crime YouTuber would, the story, okay? Because a lot of these stories I haven't seen covered by um, the uh, true crime YouTubers. So you guys haven't heard them. And if you've seen them on Snapped or Dateline, that's awesome, but you don't know the inside tease like I do. So I'm gonna give the story just like anybody else would. And then I'm gonna tell you like, were those crocodile tears that she was crying in that court proceeding real? Does she really act like that? Because some of these women, it's sickening. They're still doing the same stuff that they did out here that landed them in prison, in prison. And it's like, dude, really? Like, when are you going to learn and grow, right? So um, I'm going to give you guys that info. I'm going to tell you what they're like, what they're doing, how they're living. Some of them have been released on appeals and things like that. And I've actually been in communication with a few of them. And I'm going to show you some, you know, little insider messages. Because one in particular, I, I okay, I feel bad because I kind of like baited her. But I'm really disgusted that she even got out. And I'm not going to give the story away right now because I'm going to do it. But... Um, yeah, like she did as much time as I did. I had stolen appliances. She killed a whole kid and heinously did so and got out. And now she's like happy go lucky living life and just thinks that it was so fair and just that she went home. And I roundabout asked her on Facebook Messenger. And I'm going to show you guys like what the outcome was. But I'm like really disgusted with that because there are some people in prison that like really shouldn't be there or really shouldn't be there for that amount of time. But that individual like really Come on now. So anyways, nonetheless, I love you all. I thank you for supporting me. I thank you for being here. I thank you for liking, subscribing. I don't want to say like, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up on every video. I think it's so cheesy. But I will throw something in there just to remind y'all because it is free for you guys. It doesn't cost you anything to do it. But it helps me out a ton by just clicking those two little things. Um, and if you want to go one step further and let me know what you like, what you dislike, or even request any certain individual story that was in Florida, a Florida female that you have seen on any of these shows. If you would like to know about her and what she's really like, if she was in prison from 2011 on, I did time with her at Lowell Correctional in Ocala, Florida. But if she did a crime in Florida, she had to go through there anyways because that's the orientation center, or at least it was. So let me know, right? Um, Lowell Correctional is the third roughest, toughest female in the United States of America behind California and Texas. It is also the only maximum security highest level prison in Florida for females. It is the only prison that houses death row. That is where, you know, famous killers and prolific killers like Eileen Warnos from Monster um, was executed. And there's a couple on death row right now like Tiffany Cole and... Um, I can't remember the other lady's name, but nonetheless, I will get to their stories too. Um, so I will let you guys know who is on death row, who is in population, who I came in contact with. I worked with some of these women day in and day out on our jobs. This prison right here is literally the worst of the worst. And if you have a lot of time or a very heinous crime um, or like any type of violent history, you're going to go there. The reason I went there because I don't have any of those things is because the prison cannot simply house people that have life sentences and are violent in a whole lot of time. Why? 
The reason why is because inmates run the prison. They are the ones that cook the meals and feed each other. They are the ones that work in the beauty shop to do hair. They are the ones that do all of the landscaping, you know, on the prison grounds. They are the ones that paint the buildings. They are the ones that work in the education department, not teachers, and teach the other students and actually help them get to their GED. They are the ones that, you know, work in the canteen, which is like similar to the gas station and deal with people's money. So we don't have money, but we, you know, it's, it is people's money essentially. So if you have a bunch of women with a lot of time who do not care about life and you give them a job or a position that has some sort of responsibility to, you know, make things run like a skeleton crew, they could wake up a morning and say, Hey dude, I've got a life sentence and I don't feel like going to work today and I'm not getting out of my bed. And what are you going to do about it? Because I'm already in prison. Like, what are you going to do? So you have to have some inmates with less time um, that actually care about their time and don't want to get in trouble and have good, you know, good work ethic or at least for that time that they're there want to try to not get in trouble. So those inmates can run the prison and the prison jobs that need to be run responsibly. I, when you get to prison, you are given a battery of tests, medical, psychological, aptitude tests, um, things like that. It is to place you in a job that is appropriate for you. If you are a 70 year old woman with emphysema and you know liver disease, you're not going to get the same job as a 19 year old girl who's perfectly healthy and you know can push a lawnmower, let's say, right? But if you're that 19 year old girl that can push a lawnmower and you have no high school education, you're not gonna get the same job as the 30 year old woman who's perfectly healthy but has a bachelor's degree. So when I got to prison, I took all of the tests and because my family was overachievers, my parents are both physicians and I had a really good loving upbringing um, you know, throughout my years, I really tried on these tests because it was natural. It was intuitive for me to like just try to do well. Which, by the way, that's a no-no because when you try to do well in prison on anything, you try to overachieve, they're not going to come up and say, oh, good job, Gomez, good job, pat on the back, girl, you did awesome. No, they're going to be like, how much work can we get out of her and we're going to work her like a dog. And that's what they did. So anyways, I was put in the education department. I was certified by the Department of Education, Florida Department of Education, to teach 12 students at a time, up to 12 students at a time, um, math. And that was grades 5 through 12. And that came about through several tests and things that they do. They I went through an eight-week training to be able to interact and, you know, efficiently and effectively teach people that might have like some disabilities, learning disabilities, things like that. So nonetheless, I was exposed to a lot of people because between the inmates that I was teaching and the people that I was working with, man, like the first story that I'm going to do and I'm going to film immediately after this, she was a very high profile case. I haven't seen anyone do her story yet. And she murdered her twin boys, her four-year-old twin boys. And y'all, when I tell you I worked with her day in and day out and never would have known, she was a little quirky, she was a little socially awkward, but I tell you what, I never saw that. So I am going to, just like any other YouTuber that does true crime, I'm going to tell you her story, and then I'm going to go ahead and tell you what she was like in there and what she told me about her sentence and what she plans on doing with her life when that time comes that she can no longer take it. So I love y'all. Thank you very much for sticking with me for these 10, 15 minutes. I hope that I didn't bore you to death. And if you have any questions, my channel's not going to really be geared towards my prison story unless you guys want to specifically know something. I will do stories on it. But it's just more, more so going to be about the true crime stories that are very interesting and also, you know, just what these women were like, me living day in and day out with them. And, you know, I survived and I thank God and I thank my family and I thank my son and my mom and just my son's father and like everybody that was there for me and loved me. And this is not an award speech, so I'm going to shut the heck up now. <laughs> but anywho... Um, I will eventually find some kind of intro because I guess like that's the right thing to do. Like you have to be like, hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're returned, da, 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 like, okay, you guys know the drill. This is my first video. I'm sure I'll look back on it one day and be like, what the hell was I doing? But for right now, it is what it is. So I love y'all and I will see y'all in my next video.